<laughs> okay guys, I'm gonna try to make a quicker video. Maybe something useful for a lot of Monaco owners out there. Now, this is a 2007 Monaco Dynasty. So this is on the Roadmaster chassis. And it's pretty common issue that you're gonna see on a Monaco. In the back here, they have this big boy charged solenoid. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have a video out there about troubleshooting this thing before. Uh, so we're not gonna do a lot of troubleshooting, but I will tell you what's going on. I just changed out the chassis batteries because uh, the customer states when they were plugged in, the battery still went dead, the chassis battery still went dead. And so I did put new ones in. They were four years old, so they were time anyways. But then I started it up. We should probably check the other batteries, make sure they're charging. We're at 12.4. The engine's charging, the chassis battery's 13.9, voltage just fine, but on the house side, we're still only getting 12.4, so we're not charging the house side. I came back here and I did my test. And again, we had uh, house side 12.4 over here and 13.9 over here. I did have power to the coil pack right here and even on the control board right back there. Uh, it says battery isolator relay on, that LED was on. We were sending power out to this, so it's supposed to be working. Uh, now, the easy fix is just change this out. It's about $350, $400 now, which is crazy. But I'm gonna see if we can't fix it without replacing it. So the first thing we need to do is go over to our batteries and hit our disconnects because that has straight power from those batteries. Right on these battery lugs right down there. It'd be very neglectful for me not to remind people that if they're gonna be doing this on their own, disconnect the batteries, both batteries themselves, go to the grounds, disconnect both ba battery grounds. If you have solar, disconnect solar. Anything, that is a big power bank right there. If you don't know what you're doing, you could, you could hurt yourself. Well, let's go ahead and verify we don't have any battery power on it. Uh, this is millivolts bleeding off. And over here, and right there, we're at zero. So hopefully this shouldn't be too much work. It's just gonna be a three-eighths. 3 8 bolts back there, there's four of those. Uh, some 3 8 uh, nuts right there for the coil. There's two of those. And three quarter inch bolts down here. Now we already checked to make sure that there's no voltage there. So I have a ratcheting wrench, so I'll make this easier. And of course, like I always, take a picture so you know what it looks like when you're done. Hook it up right. This is the only place in the RV where, just bend that out of the way, the chassis battery and the house batteries meet up. Every other RV will have some different place or some other auxiliary start solenoid or charge solenoid, they'll call it, but that's what this one is, the big boy. They do make a latching one, so don't put a latching one in this position because uh, that'll cause problems too. Some manufacturers use that. Uh, Fleetwood did, and so did, um, Alphas. This is supposed to be able to handle high, high amperage. I think 300, uh, let's see, 200 amps continuous, but a lot more than 200 amps goes through this, and I'm not an electrical engineer. So I don't think it's the right application. On some of my uh, Tiffin videos, I'll point out that they just have a battery maintainer that gets plugged into 110 outlet, hook up directly to the chassis batteries whenever you're plugged in. That's just doing a battery maintain maintenance on it. And it's really simple. This one has a big logic on that board right back there. And this coil gets really hot. So it does use quite a bit of amperage keeping it open. So it's, it's very, very silly. It's not latching, so the coil has to be activated continuously. I think it's a, I think it's a bad application, but nobody asks me when they're building them. be careful we do have the batteries disconnected just go ahead and pull it up out of those brackets down there that'll give me access to this last nut again this is for the low voltage coil that's that controls this that's all this is is using low amps low current to make a little magnet to pull a plunger down on here to connect the two batteries together uh, 
basically like any relay would work. All right, so that's the easy step. All right, so I got it set up here on my workbench. The next thing we're gonna do is actually take this thing apart. The next thing I wanna do is just go ahead and take these off right here. So you're gonna be hooked up to wires underneath this cap. I'm gonna wanna rip those wires. And it shouldn't be too tight. See, I was just hand taped on that. Don't lose those. And don't lose the washers, right? All right, next thing you want to do, I think it's 5 sixteenths right here. This holds this cap on. Remember, there's just a, uh, a coil right here that pulls a plunger to short, that shorts these two copper studs together. I'm pretty sure that's what the problem's gonna be. Uh, should definitely inspect to make sure that the plastic housing itself isn't cracked or overheated, which I'm not seeing. Let's see if we can't carefully pull this apart. Pushing that one down gently, right? It looked pretty gentle how I did that. Like I said, this thing gets pretty hot. So this plastic under here tends to uh, warm up quite a bit. Alright, so we're doing pretty well. Push that down the rest of the way. Push that down the rest of the way. Okay. Now we can see the guts of this thing and why it's probably not working very well, right? You take a look at it, it's just gross as can be. This is that copper disc that the plunger basically uh, is going to push against these points right in uh, there that are all corroded too. So yeah, it looks pretty bad. So I'm gonna basically say we are not making very good pro contact on any of these surfaces. But the key is to not break these wires right there that go to the coil. This is just the magnet side of it. It doesn't do anything. Here. So, put this aside. And now we're just gonna clean up everything. Uh, we're just gonna clean up everything on the cap side because these are just contacts in here. It's hard to see it because it's all gross. That sh these should be uh, copper colored, the same color as these threads right there. And that's it. All this is is a, a copper washer that gets pushed against those two and literally shorts these uh, two studs together. That's it. Magic. So basically this is just years and years and years of uh, arcing and sparking as it uh, tries to pull a lot of amperage through it each time it engages and disengages. And this thing, you'll hear it back there when it's, when it's operating. It'll click on and off and on and off a lot because uh, that logic that controls it uh, if battery voltage gets too low or too high, it'll kick it in and out. So it does cycle it quite a bit. And yeah, it's not the best system. You know, it's probably important I let you guys know you should be having eye protection on if you're doing this. Uh, yeah, we, we like our eyes, right? So you, can, you might be able to see how much prettier it is. It's still pitted pretty well, so I'll still have to make a good work of this. They're doing the same thing here. Uh, you could undo these, but I don't want to break the plastic housing because I'm pretty sure that the plastic around these uh, threads is pretty tight. Like it melted around the threads, so it'll be difficult to do that, pull these off without breaking it. And I don't want to break the cap. So we'll just try to do this without breaking it. Let's use a little smaller brush this time. And yes, we can use some electrical contact cleaner once we get towards the end. Hopefully you can see them starting to polish up. So let me just work on this off camera and hopefully we'll look a lot better when we're done. I also have to have my multi-tool here. My battery powered Dremel. That'll work out pretty well with a wire brush. And of course you can also just use uh, some sandpaper. 
Start with uh, 80 and work the way down. You can move down to a thousand grit, that'd be nice. We don't want to pit this thing more than it really is because it's pitted pretty well. So we want to try to get rid of all the pits that we can on both surfaces. I have a rotary emery cloth, so I'll just use that instead. What we definitely don't want to do is grind it too much or re... If you can machine it, that'd be great, but we want to make sure that the, the surfaces meet nice and flat. If we just make a, a one little peak right there, I won't be able to help handle the current and this thing won't collapse and make good and it won't make good contact on it when it compresses down together so we don't really want to deform this shape we want it to still be pretty flat and we don't want to deform this shape or grind off too much we want the there to be a high point in the middle where it touches like i said this is just a very flexible emery cloth it's not aggressive at all Pretty pleased with that. I think that looks good. I'm pretty pleased with that too. All right, now we'll just get some. We'll just use some electronic cleaner. Kind of clean up our mess in there. Try to reduce any sort of uh, metallic dust that would be in there causing problems. We'll do the same thing on this. Clean that up. I'll try to clean off as much of this as we can. That's the can leaking. Pay no attention to the sizzling sound. So the theory of operation is pretty straightforward. There's just a, this coil creates a magnet and forces this plunger up against these two points right there. It's that spring around top. When the coil loses a, a current through it, it pushes that plunger back. It's very, very simple. That's as simple as it gets. So we'll just put this back together. I don't think you can really assemble this wrong because it is pinned and it doesn't matter. Uh, either one of these little voltage cables, if it's positive or negative, there's no uh, directional sensitivity on it. I think I got this together okay. Got my stud sticking out there. I'll just push it all together. It's not a head, it's not an engine block. You don't have to torque it down substantially. And these were, I don't know if you could see it, I didn't really show it in there. They're kind of like carriage bolts, so they do have a, uh, a square base to them. So they don't turn once they're in place. Hopefully you can see it's got a square base to it in there. Kind of the most delicate part, because this is what we don't want to break those wires underneath there. Those were pretty much just hand tight on it. And I got it mocked up right here, so we'll just make sure that it at least makes noises, right? Cool. So we didn't break the coil wires. That's good. So the important thing to remember when you're putting it back in, let's hook up uh, one of these leads first, because it's hard to do once it's back in there. It's harder to get to that one. I don't need to torque it with a ratchet. That's good. Don't want to break that. Don't crush anything behind here. All right. screws tighten that up tighten that, tighten that up 
It was the big nut first. I have to put the little nut on first. But the logic behind that control board that's back there is once it sees it's, it has a bi-directional relay delay built into it. It's from Intellitech. Uh, like I said, I think I have a video I put together on troubleshooting it a little bit or troubleshooting this whole thing before. I'll try to link it to you guys. I'll link it in the I'll try to link it in the description. But once it sees um charge voltage, I think in excess of 12.8 or 12.9 on one side, it should send out uh, voltage or current to the coil to engage that solenoid. Now, it does step down the current or the voltage instead of being like 12 volts or 13 or 14 volts constantly, it steps it down to like, I don't know, six or eight. So after that, it gives, uh, I guess, prolonged life to the coil and everything. And then if uh, it starts seeing that battery voltage on the charge side gets too low, let's say the house batteries are so low that it starts taking too much voltage away from the chassis side, it'll disengage the solenoid. It'll re-engage it and then eventually clicking on and off and on and off, it charges up the other batteries. Uh, and works uh, vice versa. So if you're, uh, you're plugged in, the, chassis, or the house batteries are being charged, and it says, oh, house batteries are being charged, I'll engage this to charge the chassis batteries. Oh, the chassis batteries are taking too much voltage from the house battery, yeah, go ahead and dis disengage this. So that's the bi-directional part. All right, and last thing we're gonna do is hook up the last coil. And again, we don't need to break these, it's just tiny little wires. Okay, it's installed. Think it'll work? I mean, let's do the easy thing, just turn it on, right? All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, start this thing back up again. I know you guys missed me troubleshooting it, but basically I wasn't getting charge voltage through, like I said. Okay, let's check our chassis battery voltage. Okay, so we got to 13.9. Go down here to the house. Negative, positive. 13.43. I'm sure there's voltage loss because we're trying to charge this thing. some voltage loss from this point to the batteries but there's a lot that's going through but that looks pretty good looks like we fixed that so we might as well check out the bi-directional part turn off the engine and see if it's charging the chassis batteries when the house bat house batteries are running all right so we can take the uh, surface charge off of that Okay, all right. I think I have successfully turned on a lot of lights in here. Well, let me turn on some more lights. Uh, there they are. Dinette light, overhead dinette light. Okay, there's some more lights. Hopefully we'll bleed off that surface charge. And that'll disengage the logic on the battery control board to disengage the charge solenoid, or the boost solenoid. Okay, so we have house light on this. 12.15 chassis side over here 12.74 because I got the inverter and all those lights on so let's go ahead and start the generator I just have to wait for this to turn from off to charging well, the AC turned on, so we got a charging light flashing, so hopefully it'll stay, go from off to charging. There we go. And the amperage should start creeping up. Along with the voltages. Bulk charge, here we go. 
Boom. All right, let's go see how we're doing back there. If I come back here. All right, so I don't see the light on the board yet, so hopefully that hasn't started yet. Maybe we'll hear it click when I'm back here. Hopefully. All that is is a ground. See the wires going to the ground right there. So we still have 12.6 and 13.4. So that's a house side. So we're just gonna wait for it to click. <laughs> Speak of the devil, it just clicked. Uh, voltage coming up. Ooh, it's pretty equalized. Nice. I think we actually did it, guys. So obviously I still need to button this up, but I think we successfully fixed a problem. The batteries were likely dead. These chassis batteries right there were likely at the end of their life either way, but sitting there letting them uh, die every night wasn't good for them anyways. They're not deep cycle. So... We could have changed out that charge solenoid. The, probably would have fixed the problem too, but last I checked, those things were at least $300. They might be up to $400 now. I don't remember anymore. It's been a while since I had to change one out, if you can get them. But there you have it. It's a pretty common problem on these. I can't explain to you how many times I've seen this. And uh, a little bit of effort, you can fix it without spending some money. And of course, that was a 2007 Monaco Dynasty behind me. Uh, it's going to be very, very common on a lot of Monaco's. They used that a lot on Holiday Rambler and the Beaver products at the time. So, something good to learn and a uh, neat little hack to save you a little bit of money. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. All right. 